we can now have a look at the methods of conversion. You can convert a query immediately to results by using these methods. Let us see them one by one. The first method is list. Convert the result into list. List is a collection and list is a collection of variable size to which you can add or remove elements as required. This is one thing and how you can iterate over each. You can write for each type k in list. List is the identifier for the list. k is a variable for the for each loop and t is the type of elements contained in the list. So you can convert a query into a list immediately by writing code like this. Where q is ls dot select. We are taking an example where we are taking a projection of a dynamic. So we are writing select. This is select is taking place on a collection of C order data and the result of that select is a dynamic collection. So we are writing a collection of dynamics. X goes to new x dot invoice to x dot amount. So this returns an anonymous and it is finally placed into a dynamic. And dot to list. If you write dot to list dynamic then whatever the result was coming here that is immediately changed into a list and execution occurs at this point. And then we are using for each loop for each where we where n and q. And since n is a dynamic we can use n dot invoice to n dot amount. On similar lines we can use the two array method to get the result in the form of an array. We are writing where q is equal to ls dot select. Select is operating on a collection of type C order data. The end result is a dynamic. And how is it obtained? We are writing x goes to new x dot invoice to x dot amount. So the end result is a is will be if executed the end result will be a collection of dynamic objects. And we can immediately convert this this uh, query into an array by writing dot to array. So this will result in a in an array of dynamics. And an array is always of fixed size. So if you want an array you can write the function called to array here. For each where n and q then you are executing this uh, uh, using a for each loop to iterate over the whole of the array. List and array are, uh, are similar but what is a dictionary? The storage inside dictionary is in a bit roundabout manner. Consider this is a dictionary. Dictionary D. This dictionary the objective of the dictionary is to store objects. But instead of directly storing the objects, it stores objects of key value pair struct. Key value pair is a struct. It holds it, it immediately holds objects of key value pair. And this object in turn has two properties. One is key and the other is value. And this key contains the uh, that property out of the value of the entire object which you assign as the key. So for example you are having an object having three properties P1, P2 and P3. 
and you say that property p1 will be the key then key will contain p the value of p1 and value will contain the entire object so dictionary does not directly contain the object but it contains objects of key value pair struct this is actually a struct and if you want to reach the value you can use d dot this key value pair you reach this key value this this object and from there you use the value property to reach the actual object and if you use the key property then you can get the key out of that so how do we do it in a for each loop we can write for each key value pair here it is the type of the key key suppose we are accessing it through a string key comma here is the type of the object key value pair this is the data type string is the data type of the key and this is the type of the objects that are being stored in the dictionary so key value pair string c a b c k in dictionary this is dictionary and this is a reference to each object that is immediately contained by the dictionary this object further contains the actual object and the key so if i write k dot key i will get the value of the key associated with that object and if i write k dot value i will get the actual value so d is ultimately objective of d is to store values only but the way is roundabout way you are actually storing objects of key value pair which further stores two things one is the key and the other is the entire object if you want to iterate over the only the keys if you want to use a for each loop over only the keys then you can do it like this for each string k in d dot keys there is a keys collection available on each dictionary object so if you want to iterate over the keys only then you can use this for each so instead of iterating over the entire object you have the keys available as a separate collection so this is what makes a dictionary useful you can search very easily instead of searching the entire objects you can simply use d dot keys to go through the entire keys collection or if you want to search an object similarly i can search for a, a value in a dictionary if i know the key suppose that dictionary is d then i can write d dot where x goes to x dot key is double equal to whatever i want to search for this gives me the access to the collection of values that match a certain key so now let us see how we can immediately convert a query to a dictionary we can write q is equal to ls dot take c order data 5 in this case we are taking the first five objects of the collection and writing two dictionary two dictionary dictionary is acting on a type of c order data collection and the type of the key that will be string so we are writing two dictionary and the key would be invoice 2 and the data type of invoice 2 is string so if you want to iterate over each element in this this has been executed now and the result is a dictionary so we are writing for each where n in q sb dot append format name is zero the key will come here and value will value dot amount value will give access to the entire object and if i write amount against it i'll get the amount property so this is how dictionary is used and it it can be used in a for each loop
Let us see a more complicated example. Here the query is select. Select is operating on C order data and returning a dynamic. The dynamic is x goes to new x dot invoice to x dot amount. And now dictionary is operating on a dynamic because select is returning a dynamic and dictionary is operating on that. In the upper example, dictionary was operating on C order data. This time, dictionary is storing dynamic and what is the key? Key is invoice 2. So dynamic is having two properties invoice 2 and amount and out of that invoice 2 has been used as the key. So you can write dot to dictionary dynamic comma string t goes to this t as dynamic is used for clarity. Otherwise it will work t goes to t dot invoice 2 because t is already dynamic because of the first argument. So t goes to t as dynamic dot invoice 2 invoice 2 is the key. And how will we iterate for each where n in q n dot key and n dot value as dynamic this is again for clarity because we know that n is this dictionary is what dictionary is a collection of dynamics so ultimately it is storing dynamics and they can be accessed through the value property n dot value as dynamic dot amount so to pictureize this this one the dictionary is Q. Q is containing objects of key value pair. I am just abbreviating it. And key value pair is having two properties. One is key and the other is value. This value stores dynamic because select is returning dynamic. And key is what? Key string because we are keying on invoice 2 and type of invoice 2 is string. So key will store invoice 2 and value will store the dynamic and we are iterating over the collection here n dot key and n, n, n dot value as dynamic dot amount. So this way you can make use of either of these three methods to immediately execute a query and return to your list an array or a dictionary.